In this video briefing, we'll reveal the inner workings of the very modern phenomenon known as ransomware. No longer a ragtag army of grifters, its increasing impact is now driven by dedicated teams working within an organized business framework. The U.S. government manages a portfolio of risk that no corporation can imagine. Some risks are easy to guess. A terrorist attack, a financial crisis. Then there's a whole new category that sits on its own, cyber terrorism. In the last few years in America, the two most remote and unexpected events were an airborne virus that wiped out hundreds of thousands of lives and a random series of cyber attacks that left the country without access to vital services. It's managing the biggest portfolio of risks in the history of the world, and yet the U.S. government confessed openly that it hadn't kept up with the world we live in. Worse still, it spent too much time being bewildered because such attacks were no longer hypothetical. They had become an actual thing. Cyber warfare has become the great leveler. On the international stage, it represents an opportunity for non-state actors to give any superpower power of bloody nose. Understandably, major corporations like Apple were left quaking with their intellectual property and customers now fully exposed. And it turns out that very few of them wanted to talk about it, fearing that acknowledgement of the risk was an open invitation to be hacked. The mere idea of your business data being encrypted and copied is insidious. However, no organization should leave ignorance and grievance to drive policy. So let's rectify misconceptions to one of the most spellbinding yet alarming corporate threats today. That critical pipeline at the center of the cyber attack, it is back up and running this morning as we are learning the company paid the hackers millions in ransom. On May 7, 2021, a large chunk of the Colonial Pipeline, running from Texas to New York City, was shut down. The wall between the essential and the inessential had been breached. The FBI hadn't seen the attack coming. And as the operator put it after paying the hefty $4.4 million ransom price tag, everything we do is coordinated to the minute. When you throw a seven hour wrench into it, it takes months to reset properly. It isn't the bad intentions of the actors that's the concern here. In this case, the Russian group Darkside, so much as the evolution of the practice itself. Ransomware operators have evolved their business models, no longer content to solely target individuals, making only a few bucks at a time. As an entity possessing only moderate cyber warfare capabilities, they could, with a little more organization, attack a country, somewhere like the United States. By extension, malware could also stop air traffic in Paris or grind Philadelphia's trains to a halt. In the end, they picked on a Texas pipeline, bringing South Carolina to a standstill. The first real modern ransomware program dates back to 2005 with the release of PGP Coder. Victims would visit an infected website, which would take advantage of inherent flaws within the browsers. As time progressed, ransomware strains shifted from symmetric to asymmetric encryption, further frustrating efforts from the security industry to create practical decryption tools. The monetization strategy changed too, with cryptocurrencies replacing other more easily traceable methods. The notorious SamSam malware that emerged in 2016 did not rely on human error to proliferate. Its conceit was to exploit web and file servers and was deliberately positioned with public sector organizations in mind. And of course, no one was quick to calculate the financial risks because no one dared to make the evaluation. It's as if a whole new department needed to be set up to combat the attacks or somehow to find a security guru who knew how to respond to a particular strain of the attack. The city of Atlanta is also dealing with a major cyber attack. Hackers froze computer systems and demanded payment. And in a tweet, the city said the attack caused... After the SamSam outbreak in 2018, the city of Atlanta faced a $51,000 demand to unlock all compromised computers. The final ransom bill topped $2.6 million after accounting for disruption to services and the expense of remediation. And so, we arrive at the latest generation, with ransomware operators adopting a franchise model, almost akin to a fast food restaurant chain like McDonald's. So, how can any organization survive the idea of the worst thing that can happen to you? First off, managing risk is an act of the imagination, and government officials and companies are good at responding to a crisis, less good at taking actions to prevent them in the first place. Every measure today is about progress. Progress in society, progress in the economy, and because you think the world acts in this way, the ransomware attack can be a big shock. 
This is not a trivial point, but progress is also about keeping up. And in the book of business challenges, this is just one more new challenge. And if leadership doesn't care about the challenge, then the people who really will care are your stakeholders, because they have an interest in what's going on beneath the soil. Companies crumble too easily, so why wouldn't you try to wrestle the threat down by making a plan? There are a lot of seriously smart people working around the problem today. Ransomware isn't the most delightful of considerations, but it is necessary. The key point to understand is that if you're held hostage, you're not in an impossible position. You just need to get your frame of reference right. Being vigilant about a ransomware attack is no different to being vigilant about fraud. Of course, ransomware events attract huge media attention, but the events in themselves are the same. The best place to start is within your own incident logs. A historical analysis of events will shine a light on where issues are more likely to occur. In most cases, these will boil down to a handful of key attack vectors. This reality is illustrated by the 100 Threat Intelligence Report, illustrating attackers' disproportionate preference for social-based tactics. Note, spear phishing accounts for 45% of all incidents recorded. On a more fundamental level, organizations must practice good security hygiene, ensuring that all systems are running the most current version of their operating systems with all the associated applications and libraries. Updates must be performed like clockwork, limiting the time opportunity for an attacker to exploit. Whether you're working remotely or in an office, what really matters is having a well-organized plan in place to respond to the contingency if they hit. Any strategy should include the routine encryption of all virtual machines and online backups, paired with regular offline backups. Security insurance can lessen the fiscal impact, with some providers even willing to make ransom payouts where appropriate. And because ransomware attacks are almost always public, decision makers should reconsider their communication strategies and lift their workforce that extra notch to cope with this kind of sophisticated attack. The key is to spread best practice on the point and promote this kind of thinking. It's the economically efficient thing to do. Yes, there are high-tech forces out there managing a new generation of cyber threats. But until the Court of International Justice rules on the use of ethical algorithms, there's a lot you can do right now to mitigate the ultimate effect of a ransomware attack on your organization.